Hey, my name is Bhavani Kola. Welcome back to another session of Face to Face to Online Transition. In today's session, we will be looking at the most requested interactive PowerPoint. And I like to call it Click and Reveal. We will be learning how to create various versions of this interactive PowerPoint. And as always, I will leave the download link in the description box below. And I will also show you how to edit and customize the slides. So please feel free to download them, edit them and customize them. So without a further do let's go ahead and jump right into it so here I am on a blank presentation I'm gonna right click format background I'm gonna click picture and texture insert and I'm gonna insert the picture of the brain that I have stored on my desktop keep in mind it works best if it's a PNG file so that you don't have any background and as you can see the brain has been expanded and cut off so I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the offsets this looks perfectly fine. Now that you have the picture and the size of the picture, the next step is to go ahead and create those click and reveal options. In order to do that, I click on insert, shape, and I pick this scribble. As soon as I click on the scribble, you'll see you have a pen option. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and trace on all these parts of the brain. It doesn't have to be perfect, but if it's not, you can simply click on your scribble, right click and click edit points and adjust the points if you want it to be perfectly on the border lines. But that's totally up to you. Now, let me go ahead and complete the other parts of the brain. As you can see, I have completed all the scribbles. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, select all of them. And I'm going to completely fill them with the color that I want. It doesn't matter what color you fill because you're going to see why in a second. As you can see, the brain is completely filled up with blue color. Again, if you want to edit this points, all you have to do is drag them. And there you have it doesn't have to be perfect because we know students will not be clicking on the edges. But if you want to make sure it's perfect, you can simply edit your points. And I'm going to leave it like that. And once all the brain is completely covered with different parts, I'm going to select all. And I am going to change the line to no line. And I'm going to change the transparency to 100%. So what we have done is we have created boxes for each part of the brain and we're making it completely transparent so that when our students see it looks like there's nothing on it. But when they click PowerPoint recognizes them as a shape. So once that's done, I'm going to my selection panel. And I want to name each of them. So I'm going to click on the shape. And that shape is going to tell me that this is this part of the brain, which is the brain stem. So I'm going to go ahead and name it Freeform Shape Brain Stem. I'm going to name all of them by clicking and changing the names, and I'll be right back. So once I'm done, the next step is to go ahead and add those callouts. So I'm going to click on Shapes. Again, Insert, Shapes. I'm going all the way down to callouts. You can pick the square, the curved or the circle. I'm going to pick this curved one. And I'm going to have a callout. And as you can see, I have this. But when you click on this yellow circle, you can drag and place your callout wherever you want. I'm going to move this to the side. I'm going to add five of these. All I have to do is drag the yellow circle to where I want it. So I'm going to move this to the side and drag it right here. Once I'm happy with it, I'm going to go ahead and change the way these look. Now that I have placed them the way I want, I'm going to select all of these, click, hold shift and click on all of them. So all of them are selected. Right click, format object. Now, I do not want any line, but I want them to have a shadow. 
I'm going to click on this 3D format so that I have that 3D look. And there you go. If you don't like the color, all you have to do is click on it. And here is blue. What I'm going to do is I want it the same color as the part of the brain. So I'm going to pick my eyedropper and select the color. I'll do the same for the rest. Now, once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and fill up these call out boxes with the text. All I have to do is double click and plug in the information. And once this is done, I want to go ahead and change the color and the font of all the callouts. So again, I'm going to click on one of them, press and hold shift and select the rest. Now I'm going to the fonts, changing it to the one I want, change the color and increase the font size. And I think I like that. I'm going to keep it to that. So once you finish typing in the text and adjusting your call out boxes, the next step is to go ahead and introduce the animations. In order to do that, you click on your animation. Click on your call out box and pick the animation that you like. I highly recommend playing with all of these and see the one that you like, but I'm going to keep it to grow and turn for today. So when I click, everything grows and turns. And here you have effect options. Do you want all as one object, all at once or by paragraph? So let me go ahead and click on paragraph to show you. There you go. First, the box comes in and next the text. But I want to go ahead and keep everything as one object. Now, once this is done, I do not want to go ahead and do the same thing for all of them. All I have to do is click on the call out box, use the animation painter. That is double click on the animation painter. When you double click, you will see that there is a brush right here. And simply click on all your call out boxes and your animation will be copied. So once the animation is done, the next step is to go ahead and add triggers. What does that mean? That means I am giving conditions to PowerPoint. I am saying only when I click on the frontal lobe, that is the red part of the lobe, I want the call out frontal lobe to animate. Only when I click on the pink part of the brain, I want the brain stem call out to animate. And to do that, we will be using the free forms that we have created in the beginning. So let's go ahead and see how. I'm going to click on animation pane. And as you can see, all these animations are right here. Because I did not name them, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the frontal lobe. And when I click on it, this part highlights. That means this particular speech bubble is for my frontal lobe. Now I'm going to add a trigger. I'm going to tell PowerPoint that only when I click on this red part, I want this to animate. I'm moving all the way to the right and clicking this little arrow here and click on timings, click on trigger and click start effect on click. And I'm going to scroll down here. So if you remember, we have named those free forms. So the first free form is frontal lobe. So when I click on the free form frontal lobe, I want the frontal lobe call out to animate. So I'm going to click that and click OK. Now, once that's done, I want to go ahead and make sure when I click on the pink part of the brain, the brain stem animates. So I'm going to click on brain stem. And as you can see, this has been highlighted. So I'm going to click on it. Timings. I'm going to add my trigger. Start on start effect on click. Scroll all the way down because this is a pink brain stem. I'm going to select my brain stem and click OK. I went ahead and used the same process for all the callouts. I've added triggers to each and every lobe of the brain. As you can see, I have a trigger for the frontal lobe. I have a trigger for the brainstem, for cerebellum, all of this. Now let's go ahead and see if this works. It works perfectly. Now let's go ahead and see a variation of what we have created. So instead of giving the names to your lobes, what you can do is you can create a quiz for your students and ask them to click on the frontal lobe. So 
The rest of these will be wrong answers. Only the frontal lobe will be the right answer. So all you have to do is change the colors. And instead of naming the parts of the brain, you can simply say wrong answer, wrong answer, wrong answer. And only the frontal lobe would be the right answer. Let's go ahead and see how this looks. So here I have, I have to click on the frontal lobe. So when I'm clicking the blue part, it's a wrong answer. This is a wrong answer. This is a wrong answer. I click on the frontal lobe. That is the right answer. That's another variation of it. Now, another variation is you can go ahead and add shapes instead of drawing those free forms. The only difference would be the students will not be clicking on the lobes. They will be clicking on the numbers to go ahead and reveal the names of the parts of the brain. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this one. So I have formatted the background. Again, right click, format background and pick the picture that you want. I have already done that. And I've also added all the callouts using insert, shape and the callouts. Change the colors. And now all I have to do is add those buttons so that when my students click on it, the callouts actually animate. I am going to pick a hexagon. To get a perfect hexagon, press and hold your shift button and draw the hexagon. There you go. And now I'm going to copy this five times. Press and hold your control button. Copy once, copy twice, three times, four times, and five times. And once this is done, I don't like the colors of these. I want them to be nice and gray. Again, shift, click all that you want to change. Right click, format object. I do not want a line. I want the color to be gray. I think I like that. I'm going to change the shadow effects. And I'm going to give that 3D look. And once that's done, I'm going to add numbers. I'm selecting all of them to change the color, make it bold and increase the font. I think I like that. Once this is done, again, the animations are already there from the previous slide. All I have to do is change the triggers. To do that, you click on your animation, animation pane. When I click the frontal lobe, I want the frontal lobe to appear when I click on the hexagon number one. So I click on frontal lobe and as you can see, this is highlighted. Go all the way to the right, click on timings, trigger, start effect on the click of the hexagon. Where is it? The hexagon one. Click OK. Now I want the temporal lobe. I'm going to drag the hexagon here. Click on the temporal lobe. This is highlighted. That means this is the temporal lobe. Timings, trigger, click on. The effect will start when you click on hexagon number three. So I'm going to click hexagon number three and click OK. I'm going to go ahead and complete for the rest of them. I went ahead and added triggers to all these buttons. Please make sure you cross check and check your slideshow before you present it to your students. And so now let's go ahead and take a look. So when I click on three, perfect, five, six, four, two, and one. There you have it. So here is another variation. I changed the background to solar system and I created circles on each of these planets. And I added the callouts. I leave the link to the download in the description box below. So please feel free to download, edit it. But let me just show you what I have done here. As you can see, these are all my shapes that I have created. So all I did was I added nine different circles. I have added nine different circles on top of each planet. And I changed the transparency to 100. And I have created the triggers based on these circles. So here is my animation pane. And every time I click on this particular circle, the mercury pops up. You know how the triggers are added. So that's another variation. And another variation is having your boxes and having a picture. Let's just say you do not want to go through the pain of creating everything from the beginning, but you just want to use this slide, but a different picture. To do that, you will simply right click, format background, insert the picture. If you have a picture, well and good. If not, let me go ahead and pick a picture from 
online. So here I have a picture of a plant and you know it's not beans, tomatoes, cons and pepper. All I have to do is drag the number to where I want along with the call out. Change the call out to the shape size without changing anything. Here is my leaf, that's part two. I'm moving the respective call out with the number as you can see. As you can see, I simply dragged the numbers and the callouts and all I did was change the background. Now let's go ahead and test this. One is flower, leaf, stem, and root. And if you don't need the fifth one, go ahead, feel free to delete it. Please stay tuned for the next video where we will be creating some math animations using triggers, text boxes, images, and some shapes and graphs. I hope you learned something new today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please make sure you like, subscribe, and if you think it's worth sharing, please go ahead and do so. There could be an educator who might really need these animations and triggers. And always remember, happy teaching, and please take care of yourself.